Hi everyone, my name is Jenny and I'm back today to do another video. Today I'm going to be doing a Friday Reads video as you saw from the title and if you've been keeping up with my upload schedule you know that I did not upload yesterday on Thursday which was part of my plan to upload every Thursday and Sunday during the month of September. However, my two videos planned for this week i.e. my upload yesterday my upload on Sunday were my review of She Would Be King by Wii U 2 More, which I fell behind in reading, so I'm still reading this, as well as my September mid month wrap up. However, I've not read a ton of books since my last vlog, which is my Labor Day vlog, which I'll put a link to up in the cards above. So I figured instead I would just kind of take a chill pill, relax this week, not be editing during work, which was good because work this week was a little crazy and I've not been reading quite as much now that work is in full swing as I have been in the past six months. So I was like, let me just chill. I'll do a Friday Reads video updating on the two books that I haven't talked about or reviewed elsewhere on my channel, as well as my currently reading pile, as well as some books that I might get to in the near future. And then on Sunday, once I finish She Would Be King, which I'm planning on finishing this evening, I'll put up my review for that. So look out for my She Would Be King review on Sunday. And let's just kind of get into the books. That I have to talk about today. So as I said there's only two books that I have finished since the start of September that I've not reviewed elsewhere. The other three books that I finished thus far are all reviewed in my Labor Day vlog which I already said is linked up above and I will just point out that the two books that I finished so far in September that I am about to talk about I did not particularly enjoy either of them. However I think that was much more the case of it's me and it's not the book. So if these two titles interest you I would recommend checking out some other reviews of them to see if people whose tastes potentially align more with your reading taste and reading style did enjoy these books. So the first one is a book that I received as an early e-copy from Tor through NetGalley which was Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston. This one came out on the 8th of September and I finished this exactly a week ago so last Friday. So it's out now available if you are interested in purchasing it or getting it from your library anything like that. So this one's plot is a little challenging to explain and that will become kind of more clear in my review of why I find it so challenging to explain but basically I'm going to try to do my best. Basically we are following two characters. The first is Yola who I assume I'm saying that right it's D-J-O-L-A and I did not listen to an audiobook of this so I'm not quite sure but I'm just gonna say Yola it is the master of poisons in this world so within the empire he sits on the emperor's court and basically is kind of the leader of a group of people kind of who are practitioners of traditional medicine is kind of the best way and most courteous way to describe that similar to you know in some traditions like a shaman or a medicine man or a kind of witch at the edge of the forest similar to that type of person that has some kind of herbal abilities and can interact with poisons oh you know what I'm talking about that type of I would say trope within fantasy and folklore so he is the master of poisons and he has been tasked by the emperor to find a cure for this poison sand that is plaguing their empire it is something that seems to be similar allegorically to like climate change so it's massively affecting the kind of crop yields and overall kind of life and health of the people of the emperor. So as the master of poisons Yola has been given this task to find a cure. Additionally at the same time we are following another character named Awa who is training to be a griot. So in traditionally West African folklore but now obviously through the slave trade it's a part of black American folklore and particularly Caribbean folklore which is where I've primarily seen it. Basically a storyteller, musician, poet but sometimes has a kind of more magical bent to their abilities. So these are our two main characters that we're following. They do interact in some ways towards the later part of the story but as you can see from my total botching of like what this book is about I really couldn't tell you. I This book's primary issue for me was that I just truly could not follow the plot. I could not tell you what happened. I was kind of not excited to review this book because as I said I don't know what it was about. I just really struggled with understanding the kind of basic bare bones of the plot and what was happening and I think this was particularly tied to the pacing of this novel. So this is very much as is much of Tor's catalog a book for avid fantasy readers and while I do read a fair amount of fantasy it's much more the kind of character driven fantasies or 
fantasy set focus less on the nitty-gritty of the world and necessarily are more exploring kind of greater ideas of like the human condition or trying to kind of diversify or expand the folklore of a kind of non-western tradition and while this was doing that it's based in west african folklore predominantly there was just so much of the kind of nitty-gritty detail-oriented world building that to me and the way my mind works and the way I read fantasy is just not something I'm very good at kind of piecing together to understand the bigger picture and so this book really did not kind of hold your hand at all nor did it really give you any like info dumps as people often like to call them in terms of explaining what is happening in the world and how characters are connected and what's the importance of a character that doesn't really happen in this book so I was kind of left confused the whole time. I was hoping it would eventually come together for me and it really just didn't, particularly during different climactic moments of the book. So the book is split into five sections and in each section we do get a kind of climactic moment that we then move several months or potentially even years into the future for the next book. However, all of those climactic moments felt incredibly rushed to me to the point that Sometimes I really felt like I missed the key moment within that climactic scene that it was just glossed over completely like potentially a major villainous character like was suddenly dead and I was like who even killed him I'm not sure. So there was a lot of moments like that for me where I just felt that the pacing and the way the novel was structured was not conducive to me understanding any of what was going on. However I will say Hairston has an incredible imagination. This was such a richly detailed world. As I said, that was somewhat to my detriment in terms of my reading comprehension. But I did love seeing how much of an imagination she had in this world. And I loved, from what I did understand, the pieces of the world that we got. And so I think if you were an avid fantasy reader, you may be able to piece more of the pieces together of this book to understand it fully. And potentially for me, I may get more out of this book on reread if I were to reread it just because now I am at least somewhat familiar with some of the things that were happening. So in all honesty this book may have just been too smart for me and I wasn't quite sure what entirely she was doing but the pieces just really fell like totally apart for me. I felt totally out of the loop the whole time and so yeah I gave this book two stars unfortunately. I really wanted to enjoy it and I just didn't understand what was going on. So yeah, that was Master of Poisons. I would recommend checking out other reviews, particularly if you're an avid fantasy reader, as I think you may be able to comprehend and kind of grasp onto the ideas presented in this book a bit more cohesively than I was able to. Unfortunately, didn't really work for me, but thank you to the publisher and tour for sending it my way anyway. So then the other book that I finished, and I finished this one over last weekend, and this was definitely another book I didn't enjoy that was very much It's Me and Not This Book was The Sellout by Paul Beattie, which was my virtual book club that I do with two of my best friends from college's book club pick. We are on kind of a six week rotation and so this one was from August to kind of the middle of September. So I finished this last weekend and as I said I gave it two stars. I really did not have a fun time reading this book as you will see in my Labor Day vlog where I read about 50-ish pages of this one and talked about it somewhat. But yeah, this one, I think in general, satire, of which this is one, is really not a genre that I like. I remember reading Kurt Vonnegut in high school and many of my peers in my class loved Kurt Vonnegut and thought it was so fun. One of their favorite things that we read that year. When Kurt Vonnegut stands out to me, aside from Pride and Prejudice. I'm sorry to the booktube community. Pride and Prejudice and I are not really pals. I hope to one day be pals with Pride and Prejudice but it is not this day quite yet. But those are the two books that really stand out to me as the ones that I hated the least from high school as opposed to many of the other books that are, you know traditionally hated I actually did really enjoy. And I think that was in large part for Kurt Vonnegut because I hate satire. I don't really find it funny. It's not my sense of humor and also I'm very much an emotionally driven reader and I read for an exploration of emotions and the emotions that come through and are, are intended to come through with satire are not ones that I really care about. So this one is a satirical look at the idea of kind of post-racial America and it was published in 2015 and as you can see it won the band Booker so obviously a lot of people like this and I do think if you are a fan of satirical work that this is phenomenal. This did actually make me laugh occasionally which as I said it's not my type of humor and so it very rarely does make me laugh whereas there were some like genuinely funny things in here and I think if you're a fan of this genre you would love this because it's really smart really well thought out 
and quite amusing and just the absurdity of it all is very much pointing to these real problems that are actually not absurd and they're just terrible problems that should be solved but that's just really not my cup of tea whatsoever additionally I'm also just not a huge fan of like foul language if you want to call it that curse words whatever and this book is truly rife with curse words I'm sure there's about 50 curse words on every single page and so that just kind of grated on my nerves of eventually I mean by eventually I mean probably with after about 30 pages and this book's almost 300 so that was also not something I particularly liked and then I also will say and this is something I brought up during my book club and my two other members of my book club didn't necessarily think this was true but I do think reading a book about the kind of idea of post-racial America that obviously was hugely important in kind of the main dialogue that particularly white liberal Americans were having from like 2008 to 2016 when Obama was president is something that in late 2020 just feels so naive to the point that it's almost irrelevant like obviously we do not live in a post-racial America who knows if a post-racial America will even happen racism is blatantly obvious in the American system and COVID-19 and police brutality events that have happened this summer have obviously just showcased how deep the kind of racism runs in America to the point that some of the ideas that are discussed in here to me felt now laid so blatant by COVID-19 that it almost didn't quite work as a satirical piece if that makes sense. So that was another thing that I was kind of grappling with if you've read this book post 2016 and have had that similar experience or remember having that experience I would love to talk to you about it or if you think that is totally incorrect I would also love to hear your thoughts on this one but yeah I just it wasn't my cup of tea but I did read it I gave it two stars just because while I do think he's done a fantastic job of what he was intending to do and for that reason I'd give this book like four stars if that was how I rated books but my rating reasoning is much more drawn to kind of my personal enjoyment of a book and less so its literary merit and so for that reason I did not have a fun time whatsoever so I gave it two stars but I would like if you like intellectual literature and you like satire highly recommend this book because I do think you'd probably really enjoy it. So those are the two books that I have finished since I last spoke to you. Now on to some of my kind of currently reading pile. So the first one that I've been working my way through for ages and ages is New Daughters of Africa edited by Margaret Busby which speaking of Margaret Busby is the chair of the Man Booker Prize and I just wanted to point out I'm loving the shortlist. I'm hoping Brandon Taylor's Real Life wins it all. I think I have it. Yeah I have it here. Which I talked about. I have it right here which I talked about in my what month did I read this in I think April is when I read this um but it's a masterpiece I'm obsessed with Brandon Taylor I think he is an incredible writer I think this is so brilliant and everyone should read it especially you know if you want a book about like quote-unquote post-racial America you need to read this book because it's so so good so I'm hoping that Brandon Taylor wins it all but there are so many good books on the Man Booker shortlist and also I do just want to point out that I love that Margaret Busby was just like white people were done with white people in 2020. I was like true Margaret Busby. So love that and just wanted to point out that connection which I did find it interesting especially that I'm like currently in the middle of this anthology that two of the authors on the list are authors that were born in sub-Saharan Africa. But I did find that interesting particularly reading this book and I am very interested as I said in my last African Women Writers Project I am very interested in The Shadow King and we'll be reading this one later this year and also very interested in Titsi Dongronga's uh, This Marvel Body. So those are two that I'm very excited about. I've also read two. Not really sure if I want to read the other two, Burnt Sugar and Chuggy Bane. But yeah overall I just wanted to point that out since that's kind of the buzzy topic of right now. But back to Margaret Busby's editing skills here. I'm still really enjoying this one. I'm almost to the halfway point and will be kind of updating more on my thoughts on this one in my review of She Would Be King on Sunday. Which speaking of, as I already said previously, I have about 50 pages left for this one. Don't want to say too much about it since I am reviewing it on Sunday. 
Then the next one I have is the Potlicker Papers, A Food History of the Modern South. I'm listening to this one on audio and really enjoying it. However, I just am a terrible audiobook listener. I don't know when to listen to my audiobook, especially because I like to get through a whole chapter. And these chapters, while they're not long, they're about 45-ish minutes for a, a whole chapter on the audiobook. And that just feels like a really long time so I don't really read them that often. But the audiobook is read by John T. Edge, who is originally from Georgia, so he has a very nice, very strong Georgian Southern accent, with a little bit of Mississippi in there because he's lived in Mississippi for quite a while. And he also, as I've said previously, I believe in my September TBR talk, but I did talk about this book briefly there, he runs the Southern Foodways Alliance, which puts out the Gravy podcast, which he also hosts. So I'm very familiar with his voice because I've listened to that podcast. So I am enjoying the audiobook. It's just a very slow going process, but also just really enjoying this book in general. It's a super thought provoking social history, looking at the South through the lens of food. So all sorts of different ways that's examined through like cooking practices, restaurant sit-ins, the last chapter or last section that I've just finished is the first one which is about the civil rights movement through the lens of food. So there's a whole chapter on restaurant sit-ins and kind of the importance of that for the civil rights movement. There's a very fascinating chapter on the black power movement's push towards veganism and vegetarian and plant-based diets which is something that I have wondered about why I've noticed a kind of movement towards for many black communities. Obviously this is not true for all black communities, but a movement towards like healthy eating in the kind of plant-based vegetarian mindset, if that makes sense. And this book does kind of touch on that a bit, which is interesting, as well as kind of a whole chapter dedicated to Fannie Lou Hamer's work. And Fannie Lou Hamer is a, such a fascinating, amazing woman. And I definitely want to learn kind of more about her potentially even read there is a biography that I can't remember what it's called right now but it, there's a biography of her that I'm very intrigued about so yeah really enjoying this one so far it's just very slow going so um then I am also reading on my kindle tools of engagement by Tessa Bailey this one I also got as an early copy from Avon through NetGalley and it comes out this coming Tuesday September 22nd and I'm about halfway through this one, definitely gonna be finishing this this weekend, potentially even this evening also along with She Would Be King. And I am enjoying this one. It is a pretty solid romance. I read and enjoyed the first one, Fix Her Up. Did not read the second one because I heard it was pretty intense in terms of the like hyper masculinity, which is not something I like in my romances. And this one definitely has that. Tessa Bailey leans heavily on gendered stereotypes of women and male roles within a marriage and a romance which I don't love especially there was one comment about how like wives are meant to always be mad at their husbands for not doing stuff and I'm like no like your husband should like do work around the house like that should be an expectation like she should be rightfully mad at you if you're not doing any work around the house so I don't love some of that kind of commentary but then again it's like an adult romance so you know, most people that are reading it already kind of have set ideas of like gender expectations and are hopefully already critically engaging with those preconceived ideas of gender. So just wanted to kind of point that out, but I am enjoying on like a lighter note, the like banter that the two main characters have, as well as the discussion on parental guardians and kind of how parental guardians may step in that are not a biological parent but are actually a much better parental guardian than the biological parents. Which reminds me of Asking and Yes, which had a great examination of like the ways in which other family members can play such a key role in like a child's development and just the importance of a parental guardian or guardian of some kind, even if it's not a parent. So I am enjoying that aspect of this. Don't love the TV show part of it. Honestly, wish that she had just gotten rid of that because I think the premise alone without a TV show is fine. And I feel like she kind of just threw it in there to get the like HGTV audience, whatever that means, in on this book. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. We'll probably give it three stars is what I would guess. And I will definitely be talking about this one whenever I finish it in a later wrap up. Then we also have Fragile Earth, which is a collected anthology of different works on climate change edited by David Remnick and Henry Finder. Also have this one as an e-arc from NetGalley. This one comes out from Echo on October 6th and I've talked about it many times on previous vlogs 
and I've not read it I think at all in September so I really don't have that much to say about it right now but I will put a link to some of the previous vlogs where I have talked about it a bit more then I have two other books that I've literally just started so I really don't have that much to say the first of which is Tracy Savoy's A Single Thread this one I'm reading for the booktube prize it's the last one I have to read it really makes my face look very pink because this cover is very pink and this is a literary historical fiction set during the interwar years in England that's all I'm gonna say right now additionally we also have The House of Broken Angels by Luis Alberto Uria, and this one is a family saga that I also talked about during my September TBR talk that I'm reading for the Latin Exathon that follows a Mexican-American family, I believe, living in Southern California, and I believe some stuff's gonna happen. I literally have read, you can't even see my bookmark, but I have read 25 pages. So I have really nothing to say about this one because I've read two chapters of it. So there is that. And now I also briefly wanted to touch on a couple books that I think or I'm hoping to get to during this weekend, at least start them in some way. So the first of those is my other Latinexathon pick, which Latinexathon started on the 15th of September and I believe goes until the 24th. But the other one that I was hoping to read along with Emily from M Likes Books, which I will put a link to her channel down below. We are planning on buddy reading You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria, and I think we're probably going to start it this weekend. I'll have to check with Emily on that, but yeah, excited about this one. And then I also have two upcoming ebook arcs that I'm hoping to get to, one of which is How to Fly in 10,000 Easy Lessons by Barbara Kingsolver. was super hyped to get this one because Barbara is my idol. I love her. She's my favorite author, probably tied with June Palihiri and maybe Sally Rooney. Definitely one of my favorite authors. And this is her debut poetry collection that is also coming out this coming Tuesday, September 22nd from Harper. So I'm super excited to read through this at some point this weekend, maybe early on Saturday or Sunday morning. I feel like that would be a nice little activity. And then the last one is the next full length novel that I'll be getting to once I finish Tools of Engagement, which is Daughter of Black Lake by Kathy Marie Buchanan. And this one is another e-arc that I have from NetGalley that comes out from Riverhead, which is one of my favorite publishers on October 6th. So I'm hoping to get to this one since October 6th is somehow rapidly approaching. So this is a literary historical fiction novel that I don't know a ton about, but I do know that it is set before and then during the Roman invasion of Britain. So it follows a young Celtic slash Britain woman, and I'm super excited about it. I believe it also follows her daughter, so I think there's kind of a dual timeline situation happening. And I'm very intrigued about this one. I've not read any historical fiction, I think, from this time period, or potentially even from the classical period in general. I guess I've read Madeline Miller's books, so that kind of counts. But that's really the only historical fiction I can think of from this period, and it is one that is super interesting to me, especially because my little sister is 95% likely to be a classics major. So when I told her about this one, she was super excited. So I'll have to read it to let her know what I think of it. But that will be the next one that I will be reading on my Kindle. So those are all the books that I have recently read and currently reading or I'm hoping to get to or start this weekend. Let me know if any of these books are ones that you have read and want to talk to me about down in the comment section below or books that you have heard good things about, bad things about, anything about really. Also let me know down in the comment section below. Additionally, if you found me through this video, I would love to have you stick around and subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye.